Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex and you are watching BC Adventure. Today we're going to be doing another Minecraft server deployment, but we're going to be using a pretty cool tool called Crafty. What Crafty does is it's essentially a web UI for deploying multiple different Minecraft servers. Uh, you can also manage them, monitor them, edit them. It's dead simple to use and get deployed. And the great thing is, is that it allows you to deploy uh, both types of Minecraft servers. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. It's super easy to get set up. Uh, two ways to do the uh, port forwarding. You can either do it directly through your router or you can uh, use a reverse proxy. Um, I'm going to attempt to do that. However, I have zero faith it's going to work using the NG, uh, what is it, uh, N NPM proxy manager. Uh, as I said in my last couple videos, it's just been a complete shit show and garbage. So we're going to try it anyway since it's an unsecured uh, connection to begin with. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, but we're not going to focus on that. We're going to uh, actually run through the very simple steps of getting the Docker uh, set up and installed and uh, running. Um, there's only one caveat to this is, and uh, that we need we do need to go looking for the default password to get logged into the UI. But I'll show you how to do that. And uh, yeah, we should have it up and running fairly quickly. So yeah, let's jump into it. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, get logged into Unraid and head on over to the Community Apps dashboard. And when we're there, we're going to search for uh, the Crafty, C-R-A-F-T-Y, Docker, and just hit Enter. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and install the uh, official one. So we'll go uh, click Install here. And uh, if you have uh, other Dockers installed, it may uh, uh, give you the warning that a port's being used, but we're going to give it its own IP address. So we're going to change the network type to bridge zero. And uh, I've already picked an IP I'm going to use. And I am going to give this privileged access. And that's all we need to do for this. And from there, we're going to click apply. We're going to let all this fun stuff get downloaded. And once that's done, we will jump right back into it. All right, now that that is all finished, we will head on over to our Docker tab and we are just going to check the logs. All right, so it's fully started and ready for use. And if we, okay, so right here we see at uh, this log line um, that there's a critical issue and that the default password is too short. So it's created a default and it's telling us that we can find it in the app config default credits text file. So let's jump over and do that before we even open up the dashboard. So to do that, we're going to head to our shares and we're going to open up our app data folder and we're going to look for crafty four and we're going to open up the config. And here we have the default creds.txt file. So we'll open that up. And here we have the username, which is admin, and your password, which will be uh, not this. It'll be something unique to your install. So I'm just going to copy that uh, between the uh, quotation marks. We're going to copy that password. And we'll just cancel that. And we'll go back to Docker. And we're going to open up that web UI. <clears throat> now it is insecure, so we're going to show details uh, if you're using a Mac and Safari and we're going to open up that website. And here we're just going to put in the admin username and we're going to paste in that password. I'm just going to skip that. 
So here we're presented with a uh, very clean dashboard and we have no servers deployed. So how are we going to do that? We're just going to click create new server. So here we're going to select our server type. So I'm going to do Minecraft server. We're going to select our server type uh, or sorry, our, our server version or uh, which uh, I don't know what you call these brand uh, of server. Just gonna stick with vanilla and here we can even select our version go right back down to 1.10 i'm gonna stick with the latest and then i'm just gonna give it a name uh we'll call it bc adventure test and here we're gonna set some memory so uh it's uh 20 uh 20 users per gig of memory i believe the uh base is so uh just for example i'm gonna do five bunch of wool we'll do one and we'll set the max to five and then this is the default port we can leave that and from there we click build server so if we Go to servers and click this guy. Nothing is started yet. So we do need to start the server in, or in order to uh, pull it and get it uh, up and running. So to do that, we just click start. And then it does give us, uh, and you need to accept the EULA. And then uh, it does give us a terminal view, which we can insert commands into. All right, that's it. So just to show that this is a functioning command line, if I put in help, it will uh, it will uh, give us the help documents. So we can we can insert commands into here, and then of course we get our logs, which is uh, pretty much shown on the console. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. In uh, nine minutes. 10 minutes time we uh got this deployed and up and running so what uh how do we access this well go back to our dashboard here we can see and uh we open up this server uh we do know that uh it is running on uh the default port so that's how we would connect to this instance so uh for Getting this set up with the proxy manager, I actually have shown that in the past. Um, so. Essentially, all we do is we just create a new proxy host. And you would use uh, a subdomain that you've already created. Here we would put in our forwarding IP and then the uh, port. Now, where the hell is that? Does it show it on the dashboard? No, it does not. Oh, here we have some, uh, uh, we can do uh, server auto start and server crash detection. A crash detection will just reboot your server. Um, uh, does it say what port it's running on? No. Okay. Well, that's kind of a downside here that you can't see what ports port it's on. Yeah, I can't see the... Oh, there it is. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, we just need to paste that into the port here. And uh, that's it. So we're not going to mess with custom locations, SSL or advanced. And uh, once you click save, that this will be uh, publicly accessible. And uh, there are um, Minecraft server port test. 
there's a ton of um, websites you can go to to check your uh, your availability publicly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's super simple. Uh, or of course, you can just use your public IP address and uh, forward that port specifically using your router. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it is, it is really that simple to get it up and running. Um, so with that, I'm going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed how simple this was. If you would like to see anything else, uh, covered for Unraid, uh, please drop a comment down below, uh, like, and subscribe, of course, if you enjoy this content and would like to see more. Uh, if you'd like to see some of my other Unraid, Unraid content, there is a Unraid specific playlist that you can watch uh, with uh, everything from installing Unraid to uh, getting it set up for the first time and uh, everything in between. So uh, please feel free to go check that out. Uh, with all that said, I will catch you in the next one. Take it easy, everyone.